Okay, the next item of business is a statement by Paul McLennan on Scottish Government response to Scotland's housing emergency. The Minister will take questions at the end of the statement. Therefore, there should be no interventions or interruptions. And I call on Paul McLennan, Minister, around 10 minutes, please. Thank you, President Officer. It's just over a month since we came together to debate the declaration of a housing emergency. Since then, I have continued my extensive engagement with colleagues across this chamber, partners and local authorities and our stakeholders. I have met with housing conveners to discuss local and common challenges that have contributed to longer turnaround times for empty council properties. I am pleased that these actions from these meetings are now being taken forward. My meetings with partners and stakeholders have reaffirmed that while we have the right long-term strategies in place, we must prioritise actions with those plans and work together to deliver. Our collective priorities must be to increase housing supply and tackle homelessness. Today, I am setting out our plan of action. I think context is incredibly important, President Officer, so I'm going to say a few words just about the context we're operating in at the moment. The UK Government's decision not to provide additional capital has meant our block grant for capital is now expected to reduce in real terms by 8.7% to 27 to 28, a cumulative loss of over £1.3 billion. And financial transactions capital this year has seen an overall reduction of 62% when compared to 22-23. Those uh, financial constraints have required us to make very difficult choices. Views from colleagues on which capital projects could be paused to free up resources for housing continue to be very welcome. On top of this, the Home Office's streamlined asylum process continues to push people into destitution, and Brexit and wider market conditions have had a devastating impact on the housing sector. We have nevertheless made huge investments to mitigate the harmful uh, effects of UK government policies, such as bedroom tax and the benefit cap. We have already spent £1.2 billion over the past 14 years, with almost £134 million this year. Alone, we will continue to press the incoming UK Government to recognise the impact of this reduced budget. We will urge them to take action on mortgage availability and lending, to commit to ensuring that local housing allowance rates will at least meet the 30th percentile of local rates, and to abolish policies like the bedroom tax and benefit cap. Training Officer, housing has, been, uh, has a bearing on all four of the First Minister's priorities, a fact reflected in our proposal for a new national outcome on housing. The plan I am setting out today is organised under three strategic pillars. First of all, more high quality permanent homes. Secondly, the right homes in the right places. And thirdly, a permanent home for everyone. I will now outline the actions to be taken under each pillar. Under more high quality permanent homes, we are investing around uh, almost £600 million in affordable housing supply programme in 2024-25, which includes up to £40 million for acquisitions announced this year in a 40 million pounds next year. This additional £80 million builds on the success of the National Acquisition Programme, which in 2023-24 delivered almost 1,500 affordable homes, supported by an investment of over £83 million. Our Open Market Shared Equity Scheme will also reopen today to new applications. This scheme will deliver hundreds of homes for priority groups. We must make sure that the resources we are deployed are to optimal effect. With input from stakeholders, we are concluding a review of the Affordable Housing Supply Programme with a focus on deliverability towards our 110,000 target by 2032. We are working to deliver specific options to attract private investment through the Housing Investment Task Force and just had a recent meeting just on Tuesday of this week. We also recognise the crucial role of a well-resourced planning system. The new National Planning Improvement Champion will monitor performance, look at trends, share good practice and identify efficiencies. We have received positive feedback on our proposals in the recent investment and planning consultation and will now work at pace to support planning services through increasing resources and skills development. And we are continuing to engage with stakeholders to ensure the rent control measures in the Housing Scotland Bill contribute to our vision of a private rented sector that works for tenants and responsible landlords and, of course, is attractive to investors. I want to move on to talk about the right homes in the right uh, places. For our second pillar, we will be working closely with our local authority partners and ensuring strategic housing and investment plans reflect the full range of housing priorities. I have probably meant now around about 30 of the 32 local authorities in, in terms of that and discuss these on a regular basis with them. These include high quality homes for larger families where they are required, wheelchair users and older people, as well as high quality general needs housing. And we are building on the deliverability of over 10,000 affordable homes in rural and island communities between April 2016 and March 2023 through the implementation of our Rural and Islands Housing Action Plan. 
This includes substantial mainstream investment for affordable homes, complemented by the Rural and Island Housing Fund and the Rural Affordable Homes for Key Workers Fund. I then want to move on and talk around about a permanent home for everyone. President officer, we know the number of children in temporary accommodation is too high and is a priority for myself and the Scottish Government. And the lengthy stays in temporary accommodation are not good for the well-being of families. £80 million pounds of funding I have already mentioned will enable social landlords to secure larger family houses who are needed, helping households with children to find a permanent home. This should help reduce the numbers and average time spent in temporary accommodation. We are consulting with COSLA just this week to determine how best to allocate additional support to those local authorities with the greatest temporary accommodation challenges. And discussions will continue at pace over the next number of weeks. We will all support the work of local authorities and registered social landlords to better understand what they need to do to reduce turnaround times for empty homes and voids. We have heard the sector's concerns about delaying re reconnecting energy supplies and will back efforts to address this problem. We remain committed to transforming and modernising the homelessness system. We are widening responsibility for homelessness prevention and investing in rapid rehousing transition plans for the sixth consecutive year. Now, I want to touch on about the asks of the housing and homelessness sectors. I really value uh, stakeholder uh, engagement and will continue to do that uh, as part of the work. I have already said that a collaborative approach to tackling the housing emergency is critical. In my discussions with local authorities, registered social landlords and other partners, we have explored what more needs to be done locally. I am calling on all partners to maximise value for money and affordable housing delivery. I understand that local policies must reflect local needs, but as these are reviewed to ensure local authorities can respond to the scale of the challenge we are facing. And I would ask that local authorities provide accurate data when making referrals to housing associations to improve households' experiences. I know that positive work is, is, is happening. At a recent meeting on turnaround times for empty and void properties, I heard about the good practice in parts of Scotland in turning homes around more quickly. I want to see these measures deployed across the country. Now, I ask those local authorities who have declared housing emergencies to share the actions that they are taking in response. I have met with Edinburgh and I have met with Fife in that particular regard and compliment for the work they have done in declaring housing emergency. But the work they have put into in terms of that, that allows us to stand beside them and work with them very closely. So this will help us identify where there is consensus on what is needed and facilitate the sharing of good practice. We need all parts of Scotland's housing market to work together to tackle the housing crisis. I believe that the private rented sector plays a vital role in addressing housing need. And I am meeting the Scottish Association of Landlords to discuss what their role is going forward in an all tenure approach. So we are going to build on instances of successful joint working already in place. And I urge landlords and other partners to continue working together to exploring more what can be done. Now, I want to talk a little bit about sequence, and I recognise we cannot achieve everything at once. And we must focus on activity which will reduce harm, particularly that experienced by households with children. We have dedicated and decided to reschedule work on a new 10-year neutral housing standard. Rather than seek to introduce legislation in 2025, we intend to publish a public consultation on this matter in 2025. We have also heard concerns from local authorities about the impact of introducing homeless prevention duties at a time when councils are experiencing other pressures. We will therefore seek views on the implementation of the new duties and consider taking a phased approach to their introduction. We are analysing responses to a recent consultation and proposals for a heating buildings bill and a new social housing net zero standard. I have had that over a number of months uh, from stakeholders. And this analysis will help us inform our next steps. Presiding officer, in conclusion, the response I am setting out today shows the Scottish Government is taking uh, and leading a collective response from the front. We have already seen excellent collaboration across the sector and rapid input from expert stakeholders. I particularly welcome the letter, the recent letter sent by Shelter and other key stakeholders, uh, and agree with their priority areas, and I pledge to continue working with these organisations on the points that they make. I hope to meet with them uh, very shortly to discuss the points they raise in the letter. Some of these actions are already underway by government, and some will be continue to be taken forward by government. So I will be in touch with these organisations to arrange a meeting in the very short term. In that regard. If we all put our shoulders to the wheel, we will be able to tackle the housing emergency head-on. I look forward to working with stakeholders and members across the Chamber as we do so. Thank you very much. Thank you.
the Minister will now take questions on the issues raised in his statement. I intend to allow around uh, 20 minutes uh, for questions, after which we will need to move on to the next item of business. I would encourage members wishing to ask a question who have not already done so uh, to press the request to speak buttons. And I call first Miles Briggs. Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. And can I thank the Minister for advance sight of his statement um, as well? A month ago, the Scottish Government did declare a housing emergency, but what we have heard today does not sound or feel like an emergency response to that. We need to see more, Minister, and the fact that you only mentioned children twice in your statement I think tells a lot. Every day, 45 children are becoming homeless in Scotland. Under this SNP Government, 9,860 children are living in temporary accommodation, often for years. That is a 138% increase in the last decade the SNP and Greens have been in power in this Parliament. Now, he mentions the letter which has been sent to the First Minister and Deputy First Minister. And I agree with the key ask in that around children living in temporary accommodation, something I have consistently raised in this chamber um, over this session of Parliament. In the time remaining in this Parliament, we have an opportunity to make a difference in line with the First Minister's uh, policy around eradicating child poverty. But we need a single-minded focus on reducing the harm experienced by children living in temporary accommodation. So can I ask the Minister, by the end of this Parliament, how many children will he expect to be living in temporary accommodation in Scotland? Minister. I, I think there's a number of points I want to kind of touch on that. And I think I mentioned in, in the statement that I made that it's a top priority for myself. I spoke and mentioned uh, to Shelter just last night and mentioned to them that it's going to be the top priority as we move forward on, on that particular point and mentioned again about meeting with the stakeholders in the letter who I meet with individually but happy to meet with them as I said as a group going forward. I already meet with them on, on, a, on a regular basis. I think there's uh, when I talked about some of the key things it's an all, it's an all uh, agency approach obviously working with the, the, the stakeholders there just now but it also needs collaboration from an incoming Labour government and I mentioned before in previous questions in previous questions talking around about the homelessness a monitor report that came out from Herrick Watt University and also from Crisis. Now, they mentioned the two biggest issues around about the increase in homelessness was the level of LHA and the level of universal credit. So, any incoming government, and I mentioned that in the statement as well, has to look at these two priority issues. Now, I meet, as, as Mr Briggs knows, with Edinburgh, for example, and other local authorities and focus on that particular point. But, as I said, you know, we will be working particularly closely with COSA, the other groups mentioned in the letter, and local authorities on, on this particular point. Mark Griffin. Thank you, President Officer. We have just heard that there is a £130 million underspending capital spending while the Government have slashed um, the housing budget. We have got a housing bill that does not build a, a single house, and all the while 45 children are becoming homeless every single day. And that will keep happening because the Government are not doing anything differently other than cutting the housing budget. I am not entirely sure why we had the statement today. You know, none of us in this chamber are experts in this field, but there is a document that has been produced by experts. Alacho, Chartered Institute of Housing, Homes for Scotland, Joseph Rowntree Foundation, SFHA and Shelter have all contributed towards a, a comprehensive set of recommendations um, to uh, address and remedy the housing emergency in Scotland. So can I simply ask the Minister which of the recommendations this Government will be taking forward and which they will not? Minister. Yeah, a, a, a number of points. I, th I think I don't know if Mr. Griffin was in the chamber when Ivan McKee mentioned around about £130 million. Pounds. First of all, that figure is carried forward. The budget was 0.6% uh, of within it, its target. Now, having been a councillor, for example, for 15 years, if any budget was particularly you know, within that level, it, then again it would be seen as, as pretty successful. So that money has been carried forward. It's not just across the house, and it's across all parts uh, of the Scottish Government budget. I think there's a number of things in, in terms of that. I, I meet with the Lacho. CIH, Homes for Scotland, Joseph Rowntree Foundation, SFHA and Shelter on a regular basis. I have already offered a meeting with them. Some of the actions that are already there we are already working on in terms of that. I have offered a meeting up with them to discuss these specific points. But many of the actions they are asking for we are already working on in terms of that. Again, Mr Griffin knows that we meet on a regular basis. Happy to discuss the update with these on a regular basis with them. But we are already working on most of these that say we agree, as I said in my statement, with the actions that are, that are uh, being highlighted by them. I will meet with them very shortly and will take these points forward. Call Emma Roddick to be followed by Pam Gosel. Thank you, Presiding Officer. As many will know, homelessness is an issue very close to my heart, and I'm grateful to the Minister for agreeing to meet with me shortly to discuss these issues. I wonder if he could go into more detail at the moment as to how policy will be 
readjusted in order for us to successfully tackle homelessness in Scotland. Minister. I think there's a number of points. Obviously, we talked about the, the action plan that's been put together by the six stakeholders, so I'll be meeting with them um, very shortly to discuss that particular point. We mentioned about the acquisitions, £40 million this year and £40 million next year to tackle that. We mentioned about the priority around about children in temporary accommodation, and we'll discuss that. I've already started discussions, and I met with the Special Interest Group and COSLA eh, on Tuesday to discuss that particular point. So COSLA, again, are discussing about how they take that forward as, as, as them and as them themselves, so we'll continue to, to discuss that. There was an additional £2 million this year in 2023 24 trying to target the local authorities who are most in need in regard to that. And for example, Miles Briggs will know around about the work in Edinburgh. And I think this is where it's really important when we talk around about the specific local housing emergency action plans. It allows me to focus in, look in on what they're doing locally and where can we help them locally as well. So there's a number of actions underway and we'll take forward the points that have been raised in the action plan also. Well, Pam Gosell to be followed by Kenneth Gibson. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Before I ask my question, Presiding Officer, I would like to welcome Colin McInnes from the Homeless Project Scotland, who is in the Scottish Parliament today, and to thank him for all the work done by the Homelessness Project Scotland to help those in need. Depopulation in rural areas is linked with a lack of affordable housing. However, in response to one of my written questions, the Minister admitted that only 21 homes were completed in the rural and island communities in the past year through the Scottish Government's rural and island housing funds. Therefore, I ask the Minister what action is his Government taking to speed up the development of homes for rural and island communities? Minister. I think there are a number of things for, for context. As I mentioned in the statement, we've delivered over 10,000 in, in, in a period of time to, to, tackle, to tackle that. I think that's an important part. Um, I went up to the Rural Housing Conference just a number of months ago to talk about some of the issues in terms of that. So it's working, for example, with the local authorities and community housing development trusts, which I think is really important. I think the other issues as well are looking at the opportunities around about, for example, the Freeport area. We have been working very closely with local authorities, the investment community uh, and also the enterprise agencies that are in the bit potential. And I noticed this week there was a, 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 a report in the paper saying they estimated, an estimated 24,000 homes when we needed over that period of time. So we are working very closely with them. We are also working very closely, for example, with SSEN to talk about renewables opportunities up and down the coast, many of which are in um, rural areas. And talk of that. So there are opportunities to work with them in, in that regard. So there is a lot of work, as I said, that we have undertaken and will continue to undertake in that regard. The challenge obviously they face is the additional cost for being in, in rural areas. So we're working again with them on how we can ma minimise the cost impact on that. Happy to discuss with the member further. Kenneth Gibson to be followed by Faisal Thank Chantry. you, Presiding Officer. The SNP Government has led house building in the UK, completing 40% more affordable and social homes per head of population than in England and 70% more than Labour run Wales. However, with the UK Tory government's cut of capital funding of £1,300 million over three years, maintaining that UK leading affordable housing provision will be increasingly difficult. Does the Minister expect any step change in available funding from an incoming UK uh, government? And can he remind the Chamber how many council houses the last Labour administration built in Scotland over Min four years? Minister. Yes, I thank the member for his question. I, I think that there is an important context which has been mentioned in here. We are talking about the IFS projections on the, the fiscal cuts that will be required, and we are talking about £18 billion. And, and again, they have stated that neither the, the Labour Party or the, the Conservative Party are facing into that, and I think that is incredibly important. Rachel Reeves, the likely next Chancellor, has also talked about they will not change the, uh, the current fiscal rules that are there. And I know in speaking to my colleagues in the Welsh Government, they have similar asks to ourselves in, in terms of that, including local housing allowance increase, universal credit increase. Uh, also, coming back to the point that Mr Gibson mentioned, the number of council houses built, and I will need to check this, but I think the figure was six. Fuzil Chowdhury to be followed by Ben McPherson. Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. This morning, a coalition of housing organisations, including Joseph Roundtree Foundation, the Chartered Institute for, of Housing and Homes for Scotland, put out a statement calling on a Scottish Government to take action to cut the number of children in temporary accommodation by 25 per cent before the end of this parliamentary session. There are 2,910 children in Edinburgh stuck in temporary accommodation. Staken, uh, staying an average of 471 days, the longest in the country. Can the Minister commit to reducing these figures and outline what concrete action will be taken to get children out of a temporary accommodation? Minister. 
Yes, thank, I thank the member for his question. Yeah, I mean, of course, the, 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 the organisations that have been mentioned there, I meet on a regular basis and spoke to Shelter last night, for example, on and in about the statement and indicated to them, and I have said in the, the Chamber today, our focus will be on reducing the number of children in, in temporary accommodation. So, you know, I have already indicated that in, in terms of, of that, and that is the, the main priority for myself. I think one of the key things, particularly the question to Edinburgh, Mr Chowdhury, is around about how can we maximise the opportunities in, in Edinburgh. Now, for example, Edinburgh did have at one stage over 1,500 votes, so we have worked very closely with Edinburgh. They brought forward a local housing emergency action plan, which I had said before was much appreciated, and they are reducing the number by voids, so we are working very closely with them to look at the number of voids. Empty homes is again another issue we are working with very, very closely, and they have just taken on a second empty homes officer. So there are things we can do within the current uh, setup that we have to maximise opportunities around about that. Um, but as I said, you know, we are meeting with Edinburgh on a regular basis and happy at any time to discuss the specific Edinburgh issues that you raised, Mr Chowdhury. Ben McPherson to be followed by Maggie Chapman. Uh, fully appreciating that the Scottish Government's capital budget has been cut by around 9 per cent and noting that the Scottish Government has allocated still around £600 million of its resources this financial year for increasing affordable housing, can the Minister provide an update on what specific actions the Scottish Government is engaged in to help address Edinburgh's very serious housing emergency? especially considering the acute impact that significant population growth is having on the availability of social housing in my constituency and demand for what is available across the city. Minister. Yeah, probably just building on the answer to, to Mr Chowdhury, I meet with Edinburgh on, on a regular basis to discuss, uh, again, where the housing emergency action plan is. We have talked about the voids, we have talked about empty homes, we have talked about maximising the grant funding that they are getting this year. So that kind of touches on, on that particular point. And again, obviously, we're looking at how we might minimise the impact of, of children in temporary accommodation. And I think there's a number of other things, Mr McPherson, which I think are important. I think I meet with the Cities Alliance on a regular basis, which obviously includes Edinburgh, to see around about how we can uh, attract investment in, into the Scottish cities. And we work very closely uh, with them. I also met and requested a meeting with the City Region, uh, uh, Edinburgh City Region, which obviously includes Edinburgh Council uh, itself. And there are probably around about seven or eight strategic sites which would bring forward a large number um, of social housing and affordable housing in terms of the next number of years, about seven or eight strategic sites, as I mentioned. So we are working very closely with them in terms of how we can look at opportunities for infrastructure investment and around about bringing investment into the area. So we are working very closely with them. I think there are a number of other issues. Again, speaking to Edinburgh, it is how, how do we use the PRS sector, which we talked about, and we have had uh, discussions around about that, and how can we understand the PBSA sector uh, as well, Mr McPherson. So there are a number of reasons, a number of ways we can look at what we do just now, but looking forward to the future and projecting that future and how we can support them is something that I am continuing to take forward on a regular basis. Maggie Chapman to be followed by Alex Cole Hamilton. Thank you, Presiding Officer. There are currently almost 100,000 residential homes standing empty across Scotland, which must be rapidly brought back into use. Some councils are leading the way on this, and the Minister talked about work underway to share good practice, but it is clear that a lack of funding is holding many of them back. Does the Minister agree that a match fund for local authorities to stick to scale up existing empty homes teams could make a significant difference to that total, bringing at least 3,000 homes a year back into use. And will he commit to bringing that forward as soon as he can? Mr. I appreciate the point that Maggie Chapman mentioned, and I think it is incredibly important. Obviously, we talked about the voids issue, which I think is important and can be tackled in different ways. And one of the issues we talked about, for example, was in about utilities and shortage of workmen as well. So we are working very closely. I met with housing conveners on that particular point. The Empty Homes Partnership is funded by the Scottish Government and, and you know, with £3.2 million has, has uh, developed 9,000 empty homes. As she knows, some of the empty homes issues are more complex than sometimes it can involve care. People in care can involve people overseas. Uh, for example, I know it is one of the points that has been raised by the uh, action plan by the number of groups that are there. And, and I said you know, we would be happy to, to engage in, in that and have a, uh, see what we can do in, in that particular uh, regard. Alex Cole Hamilton to be followed by Ruth McGuire. Thank you very much, Presiding Officer. It is disappointing just how little there is in this statement from the Minister in terms of the action the Government plans to take to tackle the housing crisis this Parliament rightly declared. There is also very little lack of acknowledgement that the Government's own actions in slashing the housing budget by a third has contributed to the problems we now see in the sector. Presiding Officer, a shortage of adequate housing can mean all the difference in terms of health and care workers unable to live in the communities that need them and provide the services they desperately need. So can I ask the Minister, will the Government look at Liberal Democrat proposals to build and reserve attractive, sustainable housing that is set aside for the key workers our communities need? Minister. 
Again, a couple of points in thinking that. I, as you may know, I meet with Mr Rennie on a regular basis. Uh, he's not mentioned that particular uh, issue before, but happy to meet with him or Mr Rennie on, on that particular point. I think what we're kind of looking at today, and I mentioned around about the report that we got from Shelter and so on, there's around about 16 actions. Many of these we're already working on uh, and discussing that with the, the stakeholders uh, that are there. As I said, it's a collaborative approach that's needed. It's through the stakeholders. It, it's through UK government, Scottish government and, and, and local councils working together. But on the particular point that Mr Cole Hamilton has raised, happy to discuss with him or Mr Rennie at any stage. Ruth McGuire to be followed by Graeme Simpson. Presiding officer, there are too many families on waiting lists for affordable housing. The most difficult housing casework that I deal with is from individuals and families requiring adapted properties to live safe, full lives. The motion passed by this Parliament noted the role that all levels of government must play in tackling Scotland's housing emergency and that the current situation follows a decade of austerity across the UK, austerity which the Labour Party manifesto seems frankly reluctant or unwilling to reverse. Can the Minister elaborate on the steps that must be taken by the next UK Government to remedy current difficulties and help us build what we need to ensure that the housing needs of all Scotland's citizens are met in full? Minister. I'll, I'll come on to the point around about the UK Government uh, uh, asks in a lot. Second, I think she and the member obviously mentioned around about adapted properties, and, and I, I think that's an incredibly uh, important point that she raises. I think one of the issues around about that is local authorities understanding what the need for lo adapted properties are and being proactive rather than reactive to that. I think obviously the Scottish Government has reviewed it, it, it's, it's, uh, uh, on it, its issues around about that and, and, and are again working on what we do to, to support them. But again, there's a role for local authorities in, in terms of that particular point. I'll come back to the point that was mentioned uh, around about by uh, the, okay, the, the, um, houseless, the homelessness monitor, which was again through uh, Heriot Watt University. There are two things. The two key things they talked about was uh, restoring the LHA to the rate where it should be and universal credit. That's independent analysis of that. And of course, mentioned about the, the restoring the capital budget cuts uh, that, that we've uh, mentioned, and also the, six, the financial uh, transactions part of that was a 62% cut in one year. This doesn't affect housing, it impacted on health and also on the ability for SNIB to operate at the, to its maximum capabilities. Graham Simpson to be followed uh, by Michelle Thompson. Thank you. The cross-party group on housing uh, recently met with five of the councils who have declared a housing emergency. Uh, we wrote to the Minister with some ideas of things that he could do. Uh, the number one ask was to produce a plan to deal with it. He hasn't done that today. Um, one of the big asks was to reverse the 26% cut to the affordable housing supply programme, and he hasn't done that. He's re-announced. He's re-announced. Well, I'm getting heckled by the Cabinet Secretary. Um, he's re-announced uh, an extra £80 million, which was first announced in April. That doesn't close the gap. Does he not accept that that disastrous £200 million cut is having a real impact on homelessness. Minister. I, I, I'll try to remain calm while I answer that particular point. We're talking about the capital budget cut that he knows. and you, you know, We met during the week and discussed this particular point, the capital budget cut that I'd mentioned, about £1.3 billion. Pounds. The biggest impact also we had was on financial transactions. And the 60, 62%, this is in one year, from your government, 62% cut in one, yep. in one year. So, again, your government had a political you choice the chair. To, to do that, that particular point. Apologies, uh, President Officer. So I think, yeah, in terms of that, in, uh, that, that, that's the very important context that we're, we're trying to do. And we're, obviously, the £40 million wasn't a re-announcement. I, I talked around about that. We talked around about the £40 million this year and the £40 million this year and uh, next year. The £40 million that I discussed in context of the statement was around about working very closely with COSA, around about how we can tackle uh, homeless for children, uh, and that's the particular issue um, around about that. Uh, in re reference to the five local authorities, and one of the key things I think for me in regards to this, and I, I, I commended in what Edinburgh and Fife have done. Labour authorities, and, and, and you know, I've worked with any authority in terms of that, have brought forward detailed action plans and, and homelessness. I'm asking every local authority to do that because if we're able to do that, then then we can work very closely with them. In terms of some of the points that have been made, for example, Minister. the emergency action plan. We are already working on a number of these, presiding officer, and will continue to do so. But every local authority needs to work with us and provide a detailed emergency action action plan. Thank you. And Michelle Thompson. 
Thank you, Presiding Officer. There continues to be much discussion on disallowing any rent rises between tenancies. Industry view is that this could limit investment in properties as spend would, in effect, be sunk cost. What assessment has the Minister made of this possibility and the potential impact on meeting green housing objectives in particular? Minister. I think there's a number of points I'd like to pick up with Michelle Thompson uh, on, that, on, on the green housing element, particularly about retrofitting. I was on the local government committee that looked at this. Uh, the estimated cost was £33 billion, and that was probably a couple of years ago, so that's probably more. There's a Green Heat Finance Task Force, which is looking at that particular issue uh, just now. Uh, when I first came into the post, one of uh, my uh, priorities was trying to maximise opportunities to get investment into housing, into social housing, as well as uh, build to rent, mid-market rent. And only yesterday I met with Scottish Land and Estates around about what they can do uh, in terms of the work uh, they're bringing forward in some uh, houses, uh, talking about maybe around about 1,500 to 2,000 houses in some of these areas. I think there's, uh, since I took responsibility for um, the housing bill, uh, and solely in my names I've met with, with uh, stakeholders in that regard. So we're current, uh, currently reviewing in, in terms of what that kind of looks like. We need to get the balance right, of, of course, between looking at protecting the most vulnerable in terms of rate rises, but also having the ability, rent rises, but also have the ability to bring investment in, into Scotland. Thank you, Minister. That concludes uh, the statement on Scotland's housing emergency. Uh, emergency. There will be a brief pause before we uh, move to the next item of business to allow front benches to change. <laughs>